With the new Raspberry Pi Pico W, I've now created a Pico version of my model railway departure board. My earlier version used a Raspberry Pi, which I chose because of its network connectivity. But now the Raspberry Pi Pico also includes wireless. I'm now able to use that instead. The parts needed are a Raspberry Pi Pico W, a wireless version of the Raspberry Pi Pico, an OLED display, I used a 0.91 inch display. A mount, I've created a 3D printed model which could be used. It's designed to be a reasonable scale for a G-scale outdoor garden railway. This was designed in FreeCAD and you can download the FreeCAD and STL files from my website or Thingiverse. You can also see how I designed the stand in my earlier video showing the departure board design for the Raspberry Pi. See the description for the link to my website with full details. Oh, and you'll also need a web server to connect to. Perhaps you're now thinking, why not just stick with the Raspberry Pi version, as we needed that as well. The reason for using the Pico W is that I already have a Raspberry Pi controlling the railway, but I don't want to have to run the I squared C wires all the way to where the railway station is. The Raspberry Pi can act as a master controller and because it can monitor the positions of the train, depending upon the features enabled, it can provide for a more lifelike experience. You could have the information generated locally if you didn't want to run a web server. I've also included a significant upgrade, which I'll explain later. There is one disadvantage to using the Pico, which is the size of the font used. I've explained this a bit later, but essentially, by using MicroPython and the standard libraries, there's a fixed font, and this font means you get less text on the display. And you may be able to overcome that if that's important to you. You can see the reason for this by looking at the fonts under a microscope. These are both the same height, but the Pico font is a little wider. To counteract this, the advantage of the Pico W, it uses much less power, boots up quicker and it doesn't run a full operating system along with the additional maintenance that that brings with it. The Pico W is also cheaper than the Pi Zero, especially if you factor in the extra cost of the SD card which you need on the Raspberry Pi. You can use either depending upon your personal requirements, but I thought it was a useful exercise to create a Pico W version, which is the one I'll now be installing on my railway. The display I used is a 0.91 inch OLED display based around the SSD 1306. The screen is commonly available and can be found searching online. Make sure you order one that is mounted on a PCB with the I2C connections. It's usually better without the header pin soldered on as less space is needed when the wires are soldered directly to the PCB. This display has an I2C interface and has four pins, including the ground and the power supply VCC, which can be between 3.3 and 5 volts, and then the I2C data and clock connections. And the screen has a resolution of 128 by 32 pixels. One negative thing about the screen, one of my pet hates, that it has a fixed I squared C address of hex 3C, shown here as 0x3C. This means that whilst I squared C is able to have multiple devices on the same bus, you can unfortunately only have one of these displays. One thing you can do if you want duplicate displays is just connect them to the same bus. And for two displays, that works fine for me. But another option is to use an I2C multiplexer, which allows you to add multiple devices. Although if you buy these as a breakout board, the cost is not much different from the Pico W, so maybe just get another one of those. But one thing you can do, and this is what I do here, is to use the two different I2C buses on the Pico. So here's a Raspberry Pi Pico W. The latest version, which is the W, adds this wire the wireless network capability, which is this block shown here. This is a micro 
controller and so doesn't run a full operating system like the Raspberry Pi computers do. It can be programmed using C++ or MicroPython. It is MicroPython that I'll be using. You do need a new MicroPython image which is available from the Raspberry Pi website. The wireless support is included in the new version which can be imported using Import Network. I also use uRequests which is a MicroPython version of code which can be used for simple HTTP or HTTPS requests. I also use the SSD1306 library. This is from MicroPython, but it's not included in the image that's available for the Pico. So you'll need to copy the appropriate file to the Pico before it can be used. The network code is very simple, but it's surrounded by lots of try accept blocks and other checks to handle what happens if it's unable to connect to the network. It also gives status messages on the displays when trying to connect or in the event of an error. If it fails completely, then it gives the display out of order error message, just like UK train stations then. To allow two different displays to be independently controlled, then I've used two different I2C buses i2c0 and i2c1. These can be mapped to different ports but I chose GP pins 16 and 17 for i2c0 and GP 18 and 19 for i2c1. You'll see in the diagram I've shown some resistors on one of the I2C buses but not on the other. This is just arbitrary. It's used to illustrate a point the I2C protocol does require pull-up resistors. Ideally, these should be fully under the control of you as a designer. But, in trying to be helpful, many displays include pull-up resistors on the PCB. It's not really a problem with these displays, as you can run them at 3.3 volts. But it can be a problem with other devices that run at 5 volts. You might need to be aware of that. In reality, if the wires are fairly short, you can just use the pull-up resistors in the display and the Pico and it should be sufficient which is what's shown in this example here and it's what I used in my demo version. But if you want to use longer wires to the, between the Pico and the displays then you may want to add some external pull-up resistors. If you do remember to only connect these to a 3.3 volt power supply connecting them to a 5 volt supply could damage the Pico. The source code is available from GitHub. I'll include a link to my web page in the description. I've named the code main.py. This means that when it's uploaded to the Pico, it will run automatically, rather than having to connect with a computer each time you want to run it. You may need to change this URL shown here. This is set for a Raspberry Pi running on my local network. IP address 192.168.0.2 with port 8080. Note this is not the normal port for HTTP, which is normally on port 80, and I'll explain that shortly. You'll also need to create your own secrets.json file with details of your local network. This should have an entry for the SSID and the wireless password, which I've called WPASS for short. While we're looking at the source code, I'll just explain how the display works. I've created an OLED instance of the SSD1306 and another instance called OLED1. And these refer to the I2C zero and I2C one respectively. I created them within the main function and so I created them as globals so that they can be accessed by other methods. There are other ways this could be achieved but it works for this short demonstration program. I created a function called display message which is used to update the display. It takes an optional display value and this refers to which display the message is going to be put on. Zero for display zero, one for display one, and minus one will send to both. This calls 
an internal function called underscore disp underscore message. Rather than having to duplicate code, I've created a name reference called disp, which refers to the appropriate display instance. In C terms, this would be called a but I wouldn't use such language when talking about Python code. Effectively, what this means is that if disp references OLED, then it calls that the appropriate methods against the first display, display zero. And if the display has equal to OLED one, then it will update the second display instead. I also said you need the SSD1306 file, and this needs to be uploaded. This has been taken from the MicroPython source code, but it's just not included in the standard Pico image. It's just a case of saving this file to the Pico, which you could do by loading it in Thonny and then using Save As. The module isn't too big, but that's because it extends the frame buffer class, as you can see here. It's that class which has the built-in font, and it's the reason that you don't get so much text on the display. I did say you can probably improve that yourself. You can send the individual pixels to the display. So instead of using the dot text method, which uses that font, you could create your own text with a different size font. It's something I may have a look at in future. It sounds quite an interesting challenge, but for now, I just wanted to get it working and I'm happy with a slightly shorter message. You can just write the code so it runs on the Pico and doesn't need an external web server. But if you wanted to show a realistic time, such as a time related to the current real world time, then you would still need to use a network feature or add a real time clock. I decided to use a separate web server, and this is for the Raspberry Pi 2 here, which is what I'm using to control my model railway at the moment. Uh, being a Raspberry Pi 2, it does need an external Wi-Fi dongle, which is not shown, uh, but that's not required if you're using a Model 3 or Raspberry Pi 4. And one of the reasons I'm wanting to use this is that this controls the model railway and it potentially could display the updates to the departure boards as each train arrives and departs from the station. But that's a future idea. For the moment, I've decided to create a simple web server app which uses the current time, but just cycles through different destinations. I have included different destinations for the different platforms, so it makes sense when the train leaves in a different direction. And here you can see how the messages are passed between the Pico, which makes requests to the web server, and then the web server responds with the information. And it does it separately for each platform. And this is done by using a simple Flask app, which I've called departures.py. This will run on a Raspberry Pi, it's set to use port 8080, partly because port 80 is already in use for my model railway controller, but also because it means that this doesn't need to run as root, which would be required if we use the reserved network ports. The program returns the information for two trains. Train one is the top line, and train two is the second line, and then it includes the due departure time, the destination, and the estimated departure time such as if the train is delayed. The estimated departure time isn't used at the moment because of the font size, but it's there if it's required in future. Once the departure time for train one has been reached, then train two becomes train one, and the next entry is used for train two. It also returns the current time, which is used by the Pico to display the third line. And this is all packaged up in a JSON response, which makes it easier for the Pico to interpret. Here's a demo showing the departure boards in action. 
You can see the train destinations change when the time is reached. Now I've got some future ideas. There are ways that this could be improved. If you didn't want to use the wireless aspect, then you could change that code to provide some sample departures, perhaps using just random times. But the features I'm particularly interested in looking at is perhaps reducing the font size so that a longer message can be displayed. You could also use it with other model railway automation so that the train changed when a train leaves the station. And I've also thought about having scrolling text instead of showing a static second train, or perhaps scrolling the text and then swapping to showing train two, as you sometimes see in real station departure boards. There's plenty to think about if you want to make your own improvements. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a like and help share this with others. If you aren't already a subscriber, then please click subscribe and click the notification icon. I'll be adding some videos on Raspberry Pi, the Pico and model railways in future, and I wouldn't want you to miss any. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you on a future video.